Hey guys, Thomas the Slow Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Brightburn. Now, before I can even begin my review, I have seen the trailers for this, and I was initially intrigued, as this is essentially just what if Superman uh, used his powers as a younger kid when he was uh, seeing that he had powers to do evil things. And with that premise in mind, I, again, I was definitely intrigued, so I decided to definitely check this movie out. Some of its execution is a little bit wonky, but we'll get to that anyways. So, the kid we follow, his name is Brendan. He's a young, he's a young lad who uh, crashed from the space just like Superman and ends up in a farm just like Superman and grows up and his adopted parents uh, look after him on the farm. And he goes to school, the school kids kind of tease him when he knows stuff about, like, frogs or whatever, and other things such as that. But there does seem to be, like, this one girl named Caitlin that seems to be slightly interested in him at that point, but then he, like, when he uh, sees that he has powers, he, like, starts to, like, stalk her, and then she gets creeped out, etc., etc., Yes, yeah, so one day, after some nights of uh, going into some sort of daze, uh, he ends up finding the ship where he was, uh, where he fell from. He starts to ask the questions. He starts to also see that he does have, indeed have these powers, super strength, lasers, uh, well, not all at the same time, but at the moment he has super strength. That he is aware of. So, the voices that he is hearing are kind of giving him this sort of message to do something about taking over or something of that sort. Um, so, this sort of voice does uh, sort of do a takeover of uh, him and his persona. From that moment forward, uh, whenever someone else gets involved, he'll give them this look and he'll be like, oh, you know, I'm superior because I know it. And this sort of attitude comes over the kid. Um, the crush girl, as I mentioned, like he go, she, he like tries to go over to her and then like does like all the stuff. Um, and she's all like, oh, I think I saw him. He's kind of creeping me out now, so... Uh, during this trust exercise fall uh, thing where he's like sort of leaning back and forward um, and having all the other people um, sort of help him out or whatever. Uh, her specifically lets him drop and when uh, the teacher is like, oh, you need to pick him up, he, uh, the, uh, Brendan, uh, the kid, uh, breaks her hand. Um, and unfortunately, again, due to some of this movie's issues, mainly with its pacing and cutting, um, we never, beyond her getting her hand, like, damaged, we never really get, like, some sort of end result with this character, um, as he proceeds to start to victimize other people. Uh, his, uh, aunt and uncle, specifically his aunt being this counselor who's, like, trying to, like, talk to him afterwards, seeing if he's, like, superior, uh, you know, apologetic, but he's, again, as I mentioned, acting superior. So she's like, oh, I gotta tell your parents and I gotta tell the cops about this, and he's like, no, you, you, you shouldn't do that, um, I, I'm superior and I'm gonna use my powers. So he does so. Uh, he also victimizes, um, Kate's mom, uh, and you see more of these blurry, uh, fly-ins of this character. Um, there was one earlier jump scare from him, um, I think before he realized he had powers, and then, uh, there's more of zooming around and stuff. Um, so... He's over there at the counselor's house trying to get him, get her to, like, be all secretive and not saying anything. And then the uncle arrives. Um, so he goes after the uncle first, uh, via, through the car, like, when he gets ready to leave. 
uh, Brandon flies ahead and then like tips over the car and then does this whole cool I'll admit that the effect of like the whole mouth jaw thing I, even though I've seen that happen a few times before it's always pretty cool to see um, the guy was more of a comical sort of like ah, I'm freaking out like kind of guy but uh anyway um, so he takes them out one by one uh, and the puzzle pieces for the father uh, is starting to uh, bundle up together. Uh, the adopted father, obviously. Uh, so, uh, he decides that he's going to take out uh, the son to uh, this forest after, like, uh, like near the end. They had gone on another one of these trips beforehand where they talked about the birds and the bees. Um... Or, like, you know, puberty in general. They actually go into that for, for quite a bit. Um, those feelings and sensations and all of that stuff. So there's that scene. Um, but the second time he tries to take them into this forest, where there, it's just the two of them, uh, the father raises this gun that um, actually the uncle got the kid initially. Um, so he raises up that specific gun, I'm pretty sure, and then, um, he, like, shoots at Brandon, uh, it, like, raises his ear, so, like, but it just, like, bounces off, I think, um, it was really hard to tell, but uh, he does turn, um, and then he, like, flies off, and then the father's, like, trying to run and flee, and then, um, you know, eventually the son, like, uh, cap, uh, uh, knocks him down essentially and lasers his brains out uh, probably another one of those really brutal uh, moments um, so yeah and uh, the cops are sort of uh, again getting closer and closer the mother is still trying to like be defensive she's, she's all like oh, it can't possibly be him uh, the cop shows her this photo of the symbols that he has been drawing throughout the movie. Uh, she eventually goes up to his room and finds the same symbols, and then it finally clicks that um, the son is uh, responsible for this. And uh, but it is far too late as he has taken the cut one of the cops outside, uh, just plowed him to um, using his super flight at this point in the movie. Uh, takes out the other cop pretty much almost the exact same way after a few moments of like trying to find her specifically. Uh, the mother manages to make her way all the way to the barn and all the way to the ship where she tries to grab a shard of it because earlier in the movie it distinctly shows when uh, he fell, um, when the two of them sort of fell together through that area. Uh, when he when he fell and hit the ship a little bit, he actually got cut, meaning that the ship that he was on was his only weakness. Pretty, uh, akin to how Kryptonite is weak against Superman, essentially. So, with that, the mother attempts to stab the son, but the son manages to, with his reaction speed, catches the mom's arm just in time, and then sees this, and then goes up into the air with her, uh, into the high, high sky. Uh, she's like begging and pleading, and then he simply lets her go. Um, and then at the end of the movie, we see a uh, plane heading toward him, and then a cut to uh, this plane wreck. And all you see is him, like in this hospital little truck um, alone. Uh, you see the symbol there. And he's just eating a cookie or laxin, and then um, the movie ends on this sort of stinger to potential sequel. And yeah, um, like I said, there were definitely a few pacing issues. I felt um, some of the cuts were a little bit abrupt. Um, the jump scares, I, th I do feel like, were a little bit too cheap. Um, I suppose the early on one is fine, I guess. Um, but, I don't know. I, I actually do, and I know it's a weird complaint to compare to, well, 
I do feel like there have been moments where I feel like Superman himself as a character has been scarier when he has been, you know, on the fringe of, like, doing the immoral thing. Um, and I feel like this movie should have tried to emulate that instead of just being like, oh, he's always super fast. Oh, he's always, like, zooping and zipping around. I don't know. I think, like, dealing with the more emotional imbalance part of it and not having it come from his mind being, like, altered or whatever, I think that would have been a much, a slightly more interesting aspect to take f from this, uh, uh, approach anyways, in terms of telling the story. And again, I do feel like the character, at least Caitlin, this other gr that girl I mentioned earlier, I feel like that aspect kind of just gets swept under the rug in the movie. But he does seem to still be there, still be around, and that's exactly how the movie ends. So, I did enjoy it, but... I, I do see that there were quite a few uh, bumps in the road, so I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. I think it's it, it's close to being pretty solid. Uh, definitely could have used, I think one of the benefits could have been giving it a bit, a bit more time, a bit more breathing room uh, to allow the character, this Brandon character, to really uh, explore his powers a little bit more. Um, I feel like having that struggle, actually, again, I think that could have been a lot more interesting, and even having, like, the first time he does something, have it be, like, more on accident, you know, like, oh, no, oh, no I didn't mean to do that because I'm super strong. Like, that, to me, feels more interesting, and then have the psychological stuff sort of, like, you know kind of take over on its own, kind of go down that road, but I don't know. They wanted a more supernatural, like, the alien, like, these aliens are, like, telling him this message, or, you know, it's, it's a different approach, I suppose. It's fine. Um, that's just how I would have tried to go about it in terms of storytelling. Um, but again, even with that, I feel like one of the bigger issues in terms of what it was presented here was still the pacing and still these more abrupt cuts. So that was my review of Brightburn. And if you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my Discord server, the other to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. And until next time, everyone, bye bye